Hi guys, welcome back. This is the last match of the day of Abios Grand Tournament Day 1. We had seven matches today. The last one is between Stan Sithka from Luminzo Luminosity Gaming sorry, and Oskaka from Navi. And both players are uh, sporting Druids, Warrior and Warlock. Yep, so we have a good old-fashioned mirror match to round off the day with... Uh... What's generally considered to be the the powerhouse lineup in in yeah. Conquest right now in the TGT meta? I think both of the all three of these decks are pretty much the established tier tier one of of the meta right now. Um, Handlock, mm -hmm. Handlock, um, Fast Druid, Patron Warrior, and then things like uh, Secret Paladin and stuff kind of skirt around and, and fill in the gaps. But these three decks almost undisputedly are the powerhouses of the meta right now. So just two players who just favor the strategy of picking the consistent decks, um, you know, playing Conquest, just almost as if you're playing Ladder, right? Just pick good decks, play them well. It doesn't sound like huge analysis, but, you know, Conquest, when you really, really break it down, is actually quite a simple format where, honestly, just picking, bringing good decks and playing them well is actually a really good way to, to maintain your victory, so. Yeah, well, Conqu the purpose of uh, creating Conquest was to actually um, close the gap between tournaments and ladder experience right and it actually made it happen mm -hmm. i mean conquest really fills that role uh but the problem is now are we kind of missing the excitement of tournaments metagame tournament metagame right mm -hmm. because when we had the last hero standing with band format mm -hmm. there was so there was so much different every single time we did see a tournament every player could have bring a different type of strategy because one player could have just banned warrior the second one could have banned Paladin, Mage, whatever, and then the whole lineup of a player just is it just changes instantly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting to see the difference between the formats, and I would love to see some tournaments with a hero standing format again mm -hmm. right now to to just see the difference. Uh, but yeah, but Conquest is also really nice just because it it uh, allows ladder players to instantly jump into tournament mode and not be like you know detached from the meta game right and i think for now at least since um conquest is you know the just the official uh blizzcon format for this season at least i think until next season when maybe blizzcon might reevaluate and go with a different format you know i think until after blizzcon at least we're just going to keep continuing to see conquest tournaments and maybe as the new hearthstone season starts as we lead in for the year into another blizzcon then uh, we mm -hmm. might see people starting to experiment with with formats for a while but there's definitely a lot of options from you know sideboard tournaments um to uh, what did uh, amaz call his format where they had the it's like a veto system right but it wasn't called a veto it was uh, well veto was actually just ban right yeah but it was the thing where you know you could ban after the game had started oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it was actually veto it was veto oh, okay um yeah so you know people have messed around with a lot of different formats but um, yeah, for now, especially this close to BlizzCon, pretty much everyone just wants to get their eye in on Conquest and make sure they're bringing the right lineups going into an important tournament. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will witness really two sold players. Stan Sivka is a pro from Magic, uh, from Magic the Gathering, and he's also known for winning Dreamhack Bucharest, uh, yep. the last one. Mm -hmm. And Ostka, on the other hand, is known as the, one of the best players on the ladder. And he recently joined Navi with a also poor lineup, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, Xixo and uh, Howie are making a really good trio, I would say. They yep. didn't have a chance yet to shine as a team, mm -hmm. but probably, I, I, I would say, and maybe take a leap of faith that they will join ATLC next season. Sure. Uh, it seems like a natural way, but uh, yeah, it seems like a good, um, good team. Yeah. Anyway, but now we jump to the game in a few seconds. We will see the matchups uh, just when the spectator mode will try to work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just, Oskaka, just one of those fantastic players that everyone's always heard about for a while. He's always one of those players that pros always said to watch out for. Like, we knew he existed. We played him in tournaments mm -hmm. here and there and in open qualifiers. Like, yeah, this guy's really good, but he hasn't really made the mainstream splash up until the last couple of months where he's actually been in a few um, big broadcasted events and he's starting to get more of a bigger name for himself and has also been rewarded with his patience of, of not draw, joining a big organization for a long time and has picked up a mm -hmm, really mm -hmm. really fantastic deal with Navi. So looking forward to big things from Oskaka in the future. But for now, 
He has to focus on what he has in front of him, which is Stan Sifka, and in this matchup, a Druid Mirror. Druid Mirror, and one of the players has Innervate, and the second one also has it. <laughs> <laughs> one so of the no. players has Innervate and Arnas Aspirin, but nothing to play. Um, so I'd actually say Oskaka has, despite only having one ramp card to his opponent's two, since he has a variety of things to play as well, whereas um, Stan Sifka doesn't actually have the powerful minions, I'd say Oskaka's hand is actually looking a little bit better right now. Would you agree with that? Mm, yeah, that's good. Good, um, good analysis here. Like, um, even the Darkness's Aspirant doesn't necessarily help a lot here when you just... Uh, right. I mean, I, you know, he, he's curving yeah. into Keeper of the Grove, which isn't great, or he can choose to, you know, innovate Druid of the Claw, which he could have done with three mana anyway, so... It doesn't feel like the Donna's Aspirin is having a big impact on this game. Exactly. Um, and for Ostkaka, you, I think you should coin out the, the Shadow of Exiles because you can stick to innovating Druid of the Clone next turn. Right. And the uh, Shadow of Exiles is just a big deal when it comes to this mirror match. Yep. So, you know, the, the way this game could progress is you coin out your Shade here, next turn it grows to 3-3. Three, three. Um, so you trade into the Aspirant next turn just to remove the mana, and then you can innovate the Druid of the Claw in Taunt just to protect it from hero power. So it at least demands your opponent to have something like a Keeper or a Wrath to be able to ping it off behind the Druid of the Claw. Um, mm -hmm. He's just going to go straight through all the way to the Druid of the Claw, which this is almost the same play, except you get a, a bigger minion on the board now for the sake of having minus one, minus one on your shade. Oh, he's going to trade. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, to be yeah. honest, I'm not really... Uh, surprised by that, he values the, the ramp really highly from his opponent because he's fall, falling short. So he doesn't have a wild group or an aspirin of his own. Yeah. Uh, so it, it seems like an okay choice because you can still curve out on turn three and you have to just hope to draw a card for turn four. Yeah. It might be even a swipe because most likely it will help you to maintain board control. Right. Makes sense. So you have to get something. It's one of those situations where I, you know, I, I got stuck with the, the caster goggles on and like, because I could see that there was nothing worth doing on turn mm -hmm, four, mm -hmm. you know, my mentality wasn't re really, you know, stuck in like making the, the play to deny the four mana play. But obviously four mana is a, is a, is an amount that druids like to have because, you know, we've seen many builds that load up heavier on the four mana cards just because you can ramp to it more consistently now. Um, so yeah, in, in retrospect, this makes total sense from Oskaka just to deny the ramp. But, uh, his Druid of the Claw is just going to get Wrath down, but he's totally fine with this situation. He just gets to play a shade on an empty board and start it growing away quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough that um, probably both players are not playing any more Belchers, right? It seems like it, yeah. It seems like Sludge Belcher has almost all but disappeared from Druid decks at this point. Um, one of the things that's been sacrificed to make room for the extra cards like uh, Donna's Assessment. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because Belcher is one of the biggest value cards for Druid and also uh, makes the place... I mean, first of all, it, it, it's a natural a natural um, synergy with Savage Roar mm -hmm. because it leaves a minion most of the time mm -hmm. on board, right? So it makes the combo more potent. Yeah. But at the same time, it allows you to be more aggressive because Belcher is sitting behind uh, your, you know, hard-hitting minions. Right. Even if it's like a 4-3 four, four, through the claw, it really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in, like, and Sludge Belch is also a bit of an insurance policy against aggressive decks, which Druid can struggle against sometimes. But the, the trade off of having like the proactive 2 3 ramp minion that you can play out early against aggro anyway, both to ramp you and fight for the board, you probably don't lose too much overall in the aggro matchups, especially if you bring in things like Living Roots as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like you say, it's still a big loss just because of uh, how flexible and how versatile a card it was in the deck just for being both defensive and aggressive. But you have to find room for these cards somewhere, Lothar. You can only play 30 of them in your deck. Yep, that's true. And now it looks really awkward for Ostkaka, right? It does, yeah. Um, I mean... If you play the uh, Dallas Aspirant, we have to play it because you have to play something on Curve, right? Absolutely, yeah. Probably will get killed by the uh, low tap, and you have no option to finish it off next turn because you're one mana off Force of Nature. Right, you could use Savage Raw Hero Power to deal the three to it, but that looks absolutely miserable. So, 
yeah, like you say, no no real viable option for cleaning, mm -hmm. up, cleaning mm -hmm. up the lower theb afterwards. But again, as you pointed out, he has to play something this turn. He can't just hear a power pass on turn yeah. five in a Druid Mirror. That's just absolute death. And Druid of the Claw seems like a really good option now. Yep. Like, in this situation, you know that uh, if there will be no Innervate, the Druid of the Claw is basically safe on the board. Mm -hmm. And the Shadow of has to wait two more turns to trade for it. And it's ah. just a lot of them. That seems like a pretty reasonable draw. Yeah. Ooh. Well, he is going to go for the board clear here. Mm hmm. And it's, one, it's really nice to board clear, but the one problem is you, you're lacking a comeback mechanism but he has this advantage but that's like counting on your opponent not having keeper right so it's reasonable because you have this sylvanas in hand and i would say that he probably wouldn't go for that if he wouldn't have the sylvanas in his hand right yeah basically what this player is saying is like okay i'll reset the board and then i'll stack my six drop up against your six drop and i'm pretty mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. that that's an exchange that i'll come out ahead in yeah. um oh. I would say you have to play the Keeper of the Grove just to go for a tempo play of damage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can also silence your Dance's Aspirant if you want. You can. Um, but the, um, is it a... Yeah, it looks like he's going for that play. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I, yeah, I guess one more mana over the course of the game guaranteed is more valuable than two face damage. It's not like he's sitting on combo pieces. Um, so Sylvanas here just kind of gets traded down with with minion minion hero power. So yeah, I was I was about to say I wouldn't be surprised to see Druid of the Claw played here mm -hmm. instead, even though mm -hmm. it floats a mana, just because it's it's uh, more competitive on the board right now. Yeah, and probably just keeper will be used, so the Sylvanas will have no like drawback. Mm -hmm. hmm. So yeah. D Almost certainly, unless we see a Ancient of Law or Doctor Boom drawn, which we do not. This looks like a pretty nice board for Sylvanas. Um, I mean, they are all low power minions, which kind of, you know, means Sylvanas gets its value over several turns. You need to evaluate whether you have several turns to operate, but it does prevent your opponent from play. I mean, I won't say prevent your opponent from playing an Ancient of Law, but it highly disincentivizes your opponent from playing an Ancient of Law, which is the most important card they could draw right now when they have one mm -hmm, card sitting mm -hmm. in their hand. So I like playing the, the uh, Sylvanas a lot here. Yeah, definitely true. And I would not blame then uh, Stan just no for time. using the Savage Roar as mm -hmm. damage source. It's practically a better, um, a better fireball. Right. Three, and three, three mana deal eight seems reasonable. Yeah, and you put a minion, savage roar, and hero power face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that puts a lot of pressure on your opponent, and your opponent can't trade with this advantage, so he's delayed with the death rattle effect for one turn, unless he will draw a keeper of his own or a wrath. Um, Azir Drake is not the one. He doesn't have the option, doesn't have enough mana to Azir Drake swipe here, so that's not an option for him unless mm -hmm. he really wants to YOLO for an Innovate, which I'm pretty sure is not the play. So he's probably looking at starting with uh, Force of Nature here to reduce the damage on this board. It's going to see what's inside the Shredder first and foremost. Nope. Crazed Alchemist is nice. That dies nice and cleanly to a, to a Force of Nature token. Force so, yeah. of Nature seems like a best play here because Azure Drake with Swipe can be played next turn. Right. Yeah. So he can take four power off the board this way, leaves four power remaining. So he is dead. You know, any source of damage from the opponent, you know, Druid of the Claw does four, Swipe does four, Savage Roar does six in this situation. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of top decks that can just finish the game. Yep. And no. Well, it's an Azure, but all yeah. those same outs still exist. And a oh, Sludge Belcher. Look at that. Yeah. When you have to play it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a chance. No, there's no chance that the slime will be taken by Sylvanas. No. But that leaves you a taunt minion on board, which is not bad. Oh, never mind. Um, um, so, what does Azure Drake swipe do here? Azure Drake swipe kills the uh, the Belcher, leaves uh -huh. the slime up. You can charge the Sylvanas into the slime and. And that's horrible. Because that, yep. then you're dead. You're so guaranteed you to leave full damage on the board. Yeah. So yeah, Azure Drake, uh, Azure Drake, swipe the Azure Drake. What about? No, that's not any better. 
what about if you you have to do swipe. silence and swipe right i think so yeah i think it's the only play that keeps you alive uh what if you so, uh, wait what wasn't better to just attack with sylvanas first take the azure drake and then swipe that makes a difference it does make a difference right mm, no it's the same thing so yeah yeah no difference. again all the same outs stand here while growth is a redraw so all the same outs exist yet again but uh oskaka is slowly climbing his way back onto this board but he has no way right now in his hand to protect himself from any of these outs no life gain to play around swipe no taunts to play around druid of the claw so um he's going to be dead to these outs for a long time unless he can pick up oh, and, and there answers. it is boom that was an additional out because it wasn't really doing um oh no never mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> okay so stan sivka is taking the game one mm -hmm. from the druid mirror match and that's actually a really important one because this this um, mirror match is really volatile and aggressive so it's really one of the most important matchups here and even warlock i mean warlock mirror match depends a lot about uh from the decisions that the players are making of tapping and like doing overall in-game decisions but when you play mirror mirrors of druids it's heavily based on who has the mana acceleration mm -hmm. so it's like kind of less in-game decision based i was just about to say this game could hinge very heavily on who gets the patron into hamlock matchup from which side but it actually looks like we're seeing a control warrior here from stan sifka mm -hmm, up, up mm -hmm. against uh the the handlock from oskaka does that mean it doesn't really uh, look that bad if he's playing double brawls mm -hmm. yeah so i mean if you're if you're gonna play a warrior against Hamlock, oh. wow that's a go how go how i didn't see that for a long time yeah me either um, but yeah, if you're going to play a warrior deck against a handlock, you'd much, much rather be playing control warrior than, than handlock. That's not to say that it's a fantastic matchup for the control warrior. I think it's a very even matchup overall. Um, but yeah, I, you, you would much rather be playing the, the control warrior if you, if you got to, to pick a warrior deck to queue up against handlock. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough here. Look at that. He has a whirling blades. Uh, well, oh, bouncing blade. Wow. Yeah. yeah bouncing blade. Sorry. Yeah. Um, which is a deadly shot for a giant if he's yep. like alone on the board mm -hmm. which is great it's additional removal yep um, how it works isn't that isn't that a really cool answer to patrons because you fill out the board and then you play re uh well no because there's all <laughs> there's almost always a 3-1 or a 5-1 on the board right so if you just cast bouncing blade and it just kills the 5-1 then yeah, rip you, I guess. Probably, but if it, if it attacks first the free free, it spawns another free free, so you have more targets for the winning blades to like go infinite mode almost. Sure. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. I have to see that one time. Yeah, you go ahead and, and try it out on on stream tomorrow, Lothar, and let me know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not well. Yeah. I, I, I'm just thinking, what's the reason to play winning blades in the first place? Um, I mean, it probably is just as you said. It's a pretty effective deadly shot against the whatever minion gets played first here. He's probably just going to end up bouncing blades it because um... it's also great synergy with Acolyte of Pain unless it kills it. Mm -hmm. Although, if he was planning to to bouncing blade the first drop that got played, he wouldn't have played Acolyte, right? So, well, why not? You can bouncing blade right now. Look at that. Yeah, but the bouncing blade hits your own minion as well. So yes, it's it's not a guaranteed deadly shot on the on the. That's true. On the Twilight Drake. Uh, Owl's pretty good, though. Owl or just execute, but Owl seems to be better, right? Yeah, I think you'd rather preserve... You know, there's no additional shield slam or anything in this de in this hand so far, so the execute is the one prime removal he has. So I think just uh, coining out the Owl to deal with this Drake is probably the most effective way to do it. Hmm. To be honest... I'm not exactly sold on the Whirlwind Blade on Acolyte of Pain because it might have. This might be a fatigue uh, game, right? Mm -hmm. And when there's a fatigue game between those two classes, you just 
did draw three cards more than your opponent. Yeah, and that's what that's what I was trying to say. Isn't it just more effective just to have played nothing last turn and just whichever four drop your opponent plays on turn four, be it Mountain Giant, which you'd love to see, or Twilight Drake, which you're totally fine with, you just bouncing blades and kill it. Yeah, I mean you're right because now you lost two removals right. instead of one. Right. And the draw is not that important. And now if there's a tap giant this turn, what are you doing? Not enough. Yeah, so uh, pretty interesting line of play from from Stan Sifka. I think things could have worked out a little bit better for him if he'd have gone down a different line. But um, you know, as it stands, he the the big giant didn't come down. There is a second threat, but it's it's only quote a five five. You know, it's not the eight eight that could have come down and and really put a ton of pressure on him. So, hmm. how do you feel about the Lothar play here? Because do do you not feel that Lothar is uh, really important to deny brawls at some point? Against yes, it is. Warrior? I was just wondering why are you playing Lothar right now when you can just Twilight Drake instead. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason to be on curve? What now? I mean, next turn he can tap Drake. Tapping is is pretty important in control versus control matchups as the handlock, just so you can um, you know keep your hands stocked full of threats and keep up the pressure. Because generally, in most control versus control matchups, you are the aggressive control deck. You're the one that's you know trying to really load up the board and, and deal the damage. Yeah, uh, but the, I mean, load up is better against sludge vultures, but at the same time, you could have just topped into. Defend the Vargas and deal with the Belcher anyway. Yeah. And you saw one execute, so probably the the um the Twilight Drake has to be killed with a weapon. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it because I think Lotup has a really huge value in this matchup. Uh, and the man's value I would say. Because if you can seal a board with at least one giant, yeah. it deals so much damage it can win you the game instantly. Yep. And ha like Handlock by nature isn't a deck that can really play a around Brawl because at some point you kind of have to have two high value minions on the board and then play a small minion alongside, uh, you know, play a 2-3 to give them both Torn. So mm -hmm, that board mm -hmm. naturally is really vulnerable to Brawl because it's a, it's a Brawl that can potentially kill two really powerful minions and leave a very small minion left on the board. Just because naturally because of the way that you have to set up the board as a Handlock player. Um, so having the lower theb to protect yourself from that for one turn, that one turn might just be enough to push through. And that is a second Bouncing Blades. Second Bouncing Blades? Now, now that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, wait. Is there any chance this is the Axe Flinger deck? No way. I mean, <laughs> I, I, the only reason I bring that up is that we've just seen second Bouncing Blades. But yeah, if you, if you guys uh, watching have never seen that deck, it's basically Grim Patron without Frobbings and Grim Patrons. And you play all the same sort of cycle, but then your goal is to kill the opponent with uh, with um, double uh, Axe Flinger, Bouncing Blades, nonsense with Rampage. But since we see a bunch of Control Warrior cards in Stan Sivka's hand, I'm... Pretty sure that isn't what he's going for, but still, the, the double bouncing blades is a pretty interesting little choice here. Mm -hmm. And that's that might have also been the reason to use the bouncing blades on turn 3 with Acolyte, because you have a lot of removal then. Mm. But still, bouncing blades is at its best when there's one big minion on the board, right? And the only time you can guarantee there is just one big minion on the board against Handlock is turn 4. So yep. I really, really feel like that bouncing blades not being used to just you know assassinate, deadly shot, whatever you want to call it on the on the turn four play is, is a pretty big misstep. Uh, mm. So the brawl comes down yeah. and he gets the the best possible outcome, which is a one one remaining on the board. Um, he has no real development options here, so it's just going to be an armor up pass and uh, tempo passes back to the handlock player here. And in this situation, the handlock player would just possibly tap and see what he will draw because the, the, right. the, awkward, the hand ah. is awkward but that's it just got a lot better that is absolutely perfect um wait this is iron beak owl number two as well isn't it oh yeah wow this build is all kinds of crazy what has he cut to make room for all this stuff fear warrex sure <laughs> i mean we didn't see it right nope and what else would you cut Shield block, shield slams? What now? Maybe. Really? Wow. 
You're gonna no, play. You're gonna, you're gonna play bouncing blades instead of shield slam. That doesn't seem right. I just like shield slam are so consistent in the warrior, right? Yeah. Especially yeah. with the inclusion of Justica, shields maidens, and shield blocks. Okay, so things we have we haven't seen any armor smiths. We haven't seen any cruel taskmasters. We haven't seen any. Oh, yeah, fire, right. We haven't seen any fiery war axes. So has he just sacrificed like all of his early game? Uh, Maybe he's just playing into a control meta game. Yeah, this is a really, really interesting deck from Stan Sivka. Um Glad that you know what looked like a pretty, honestly, a pretty stale-looking mirror match when we looked at the the lineups. You know, something that we'd seen played out a hundred times. It's nice to see this this kind of crazy warrior deck being thrown into the mix. And here we go. We are using bouncing blades as a deadly shot here, and it's taking out a Malganis. Three mana killer Malganis. That looks like a pretty good card right now, Lothar. Yeah, there's a better one in the Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> but no one uses that. Nope. Well, what? another word call. Well, it still has value. You have Doomguard in your hand. Yep. So I guess and the Doomguard dies to the gore hole. Wow, what a coincidence. I guess let's try this again, right? Yep. <sighs> so yeah, is this is this just an anti handlock build of the deck? Like he's cut out all the little wimpy stuff that's irrelevant, and he's playing more removal, gore howl to deal with doom guard, as you pointed out. Silences kind of looks that way, right? Like this is just yeah, specifically kind of teched at handlock. Pretty interesting. And Sylvanas not bad at all too. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't use the owl here, he's he's seen two drakes already, and this is the second void caller. So if he's not going to use the owl here. Uh, it might be have, it might be used just uh, against a taunt. That's very true, yeah. Um, just to push through Gromash damage, that makes a lot of sense. You can play Iron Beak out and Grom in the same turn. So if you have a Death Spite equipped, then you can really push through the damage that way. I wouldn't be surprised if there wouldn't be a Gromash in the deck. That would be like an instead of a Gromash, that would be a Nefarian or I don't know. Uh, really? Can be... If you're if you're teching against Handlock, do you not want the Grom in there? It's pretty important, right? Uh, we're not sure if it's hacking out handlock. Yeah, but it, it seems to be leaning that way, right? All of the cards make sense against handlock. The the double owl, the bouncing blades, um, gore howl, just to get more value in terms of removal without having to use an execute on a shield slam or a shield slam on every minion that's played. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It starts to make a lot of sense when you actually think about it in handlock terms. And he's definitely done a good job so far of dissecting this handlock from Oskaka. So. Yep. Alright, Defender of Argus comes down, and is he going to take the Mortal Coil here and just hope oh, that wow. his Doomguard doesn't oh, disappear? Wow. He is, wow. That's a big leap, I would it say. Is. And... And the Doomguard is taking. Wow. Alright. Well, Stan Sivka is looking good now, right now. There's a shield blow. He was dead to okay. top deck Gromash there. Just worth pointing out. Oh, yeah. Because the Doomguard got stolen, he's actually dead to top deck Gromash, but... No such luck for uh, Stan Sivka. I say no such luck. He just won a one in three to steal a uh, to steal a Doom Guard. That seems like a, a fairly lucky turn of events for him. But, um, still, uh, Oskaka lives to fight another day, but still the threat of uh, of Gromash remains. So we might see him look for a more defensive play this turn. Uh, Mountain Giant plus Taunt is a possibility. The Heal Bots a nice for security, but when you have double Molten in your hand, do you really want to be heal botting already? No, but I think you have to Shadow Flame this turn. Oh no, wait, maybe not. Mm. Now you can just Mortal Coil the remains of the Dusty Car uh, after the battle with the Defender of Argus. Yep. So I'd say that's the correct choice here. Yep, I like it. Mountain Giant is coming down. Is he going to choose to use the last taunt in his hand just to get a bit of extra security? Uh, ah, no, I okay. So. He is going to go ahead and Shadow Flame. So in this case, he, he definitely does not need to taunt. There's no way he's getting burst mm -hmm. from, from but w Would you Shadow Flame that? Uh, I think once the Mortal Coil was drawn, I think that play was just fine. Uh, Shadow Flame is a really, really high value card. And if you're playing the Demon version, you only have one of them in your deck, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, in any control versus control matchup, Shadow Flame is just a really, really high value card. So I probably would have tried to preserve it for a little bit more value there, especially since you have double Molten in your hand for like really swing mm -hmm. turns later on. So. Okay, so now we can see that um, the Jaraxxus might be the, the play here, right? Because you kind of might die to Gromash, but you'll die eventually to it anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you just start... 
Now we can. What I'm talking about? There's two molten giants. No, 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 no. Just yeah. Scratch there's... everything I said. I, I'm getting too tired. I was gonna let you go for a bit, but that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that line I of thought can't... was gonna come to an end pretty quickly. Yeah. Never mind. You have to play those molten giants first. Yeah. Um, the only question is, having drawn the second arg, the uh, yeah, the second argus into his hand, it starts to become a bit more appealing. This is the one play he could make that keeps him alive against Grom. Um, but it was just the question I was going to ask about whether it's worth using your last taunt to play around Gromash this turn. But since he drew into the second argus, it seems a, a lot more solid to, to make this play. Hmm. And now the owl can bypass a taunt. But there's no way of applic uh, of of doing lethal damage this turn. Nope. Even with the girl hole, you only have twelve. Mm -hmm. So I guess hmm. you use one execute. Don't you want to shield block first? Uh, I think maybe he's going for uh, acolyte of pain and uh, baron Geddon this turn. So he's going to trade into the. Uh, giant with the Shield Maiden, and then just play Baron Geddon to clean up the 2 2 Sun Fury Protector, and then draw another card off of his Acolyte to cycle it immediately. Okay, that doesn't sound bad. You also deal 2 damage. Right. No, oh, uh, he is going to Shield Block. Okay. Whoa! Death Lord! Ooh, okay, scrub the anti handlock idea. Why would you play handlock, uh, Death Lord against uh, anti handlock? In, in an anti handlock. Yeah, right. uh, that's what I'm saying. So uh, my idea of this being text specifically against Handlock, that's probably not the case anymore because Death Lord mm -hmm. not a great card against Handlock. But it makes sense. Death Lord makes sense with Wuthering Blades because it is a it it is a high health minion. So right. most likely your opponent's minion will die first. That's very true. Yeah. And it makes sense with Double Brawl. Yep. Uh, we've only seen one brawl drawn so far, though, right? But mm -hmm, you're just mm -hmm. suspecting there might be a second one in it somewhere. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, but now with the threat of the death spike gone, Oskaka can afford to be a little bit braver with his life total, because um, you're now requiring your opponent to have both uh, Gromash and an activator in his hand to get the job done. So if he wants to make slightly riskier plays now, he can do that if he really wants to. Um, but yeah, as you said, these Moan Giants need to get onto the board eventually so that uh, he can afford to play Jaraxxus. Um, in a, in a control, versus control matchup like this, you really can't afford to um, be skipping out on the Molten Giants and making them unplayable by playing Jaraxxus. You really yeah. need to, to get the value out of all of your cards and then use Jaraxxus as like the, the, final, the final stamp on the value of the game. Well, there's one matchup when you can play Jarax before you play Molten Giants. And this is against Priest. Control Priest. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, on against Priest, you can literally just slam Jaraxxus on turn 9 and the game pretty much ends. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no way Priest can deal with all those minions eventually. Yeah. Even and with double Light Wells. And most, hey, light bombs. most importantly, there's no way they can just deal 15 damage to your face either. So. Um, Jarax is a pretty safe play against Priest and a pretty destructive one as well. But mm -hmm. we have Warrior here and... Uh, no brawl in hand. No brawl in hand. No option to draw cards either. But he does, oh, have, sorry, he does have the Shield Slam. Yeah. He does have the Shield Slam and he uh, to take care of this giant. So there's probably no real need for a brawl here. Shield Slam followed up with the Doctor Boom looks pretty solid right now. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, even better with the Baron Gavin, what am I saying? Mm-hmm. The big game hunter will have some value, but it will, it will have it eventually, anyway. Yeah. The only slightly sad thing about this from uh, uh, Sifka's perspective is that um, Baron Geddon is a really nice answer after you get your first big threat big game hunted, because you can just play it on the board afterwards to have another big threat straight away, and it clears up the big game hunter for you, so you get the revenge kill. Um, so the fact that this is his first threat is probably going to end up getting big game hunted. He is going to have to actually specifically find a way to deal with the 4-2 on the board as well. Mm -hmm. The Dark Bomb is... The Dark Bomb is really not a good draw right now. It's basically useless in this matchup for now. Yep. He used the Shadow Flame already, and that's one of the pain that he has to deal with now. Because... Mm -hmm. As we talked before, it has really insane, insane value, and he didn't use that to the insane value at that point, because the Justica could have been dead to a mortal call, which still sits in the hand. Look at that. It's really awkward. Mm -hmm. You want to cycle as much as, as, as you can in the control matchups, so I would say that the mortal call should have been played a lot of time ago. 
Uh, yeah, he said the first art bomb was not a particularly good draw. The second one wasn't bad, though. And now, boom, suddenly we have a pretty impressive looking board out of nowhere. Yep. And both shield slams have been, have been played already. Yeah, I believe both shield slams, both bouncing blades, and one execute have been used. So I think there is one execute and possibly a second brawl left in the deck in terms of uh, removal for big things. Yeah, but you can always just deck <laughs> into it. Yeah, just go <laughs> Yeah, yeah. go house, bash, and that's it. Yep. All right, just going to ignore it, play his own big minion to contest. I guess this is totally fine. Then this way, if the trade happens, he can just pick up the trade with the Fiery War Axe next turn. Keep the Gore Howl as a surprise. Mm -hmm. If you're playing an uncommon card like that that can just randomly do seven damage to your opponent's face out of nowhere, it might there might be some merit to concealing it for as long as possible. Better than Leo Jenkins. Mm -hmm. It's better than Leo Jenkins in this situation. Yep, absolutely. No one expects a Gore Howl to the face. Yeah. So yeah, even after the trade happens, the Boombots threaten to just pick up the, the one remaining health, and even if the Boombots get dealt with as well, which we do see one Mortal Coil to at least deal with one of them, um, then, you know, uh, Stan Sifka at this point with uh, 40 health is perfectly happy just Fiery War axing down an 8-1. So mm. we're going to see Ancient Watcher come down, and I believe the Mortal Coil, yeah. So the ordering here, he plays the kind of useless minion to hopefully try and tank the uh, the Boombot hit unsuccessfully. It deals for damage too. It does. Uh, is it is it meaningful right now? I mean, the, with uh, Gromash, very it might well happen. could be. If he okay, he's gonna owl the second Boombot. That's interesting. He's gonna go for the heal. So it looked like he was gonna go for the Emperor play, and then there was actually a possible lethal the following turn with the second Boombot hitting face for four again, and then just Gorehow swinging for seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact he's spent the heal bot here, no such lethal possibilities. The giant's just going to get traded out by the 1-1, one, one, and uh, he can just refill this board pretty happily with a Death Lord, <laughs> since there's no minions <laughs> left in the deck. Death Lord has insane value. Three mana to eight taunt? Yeah, gimme. Yep. Uh, he's going to favor the Fiery War Axe instead, just to tidy up this board. Um, and Oskaka is going to have the Jaraxxus as his last gasp, but it's probably too late at this point when he's already fatiguing. The 15 life is only going to let him live a few turns, and there's no real way that I see him building up enough uh, damage to power kill. on the board to yeah. punch through, you know, what is it now, 46 armor that's steadily increasing by four a turn. So. Uh, I mean, he's allowed to use Jaraxxus with hero power next turn. Yep. So that's definitely not bad. That's true. That could possibly speed it up for a turn, but he really doesn't have that much time. He can afford to go very low from fatigue, and then boost himself back up with Jaraxxus. But, you know, if he's already taken five or six damage from Fatigue before he plays Jaraxxus, then he only has two mm -hmm. turns to live in Jaraxxus form anyway. Um, so it's it's fairly irrelevant at which point he plays the Jaraxxus. And in, uh, I think it's probably just better just to play it early anyway and just maximize the amount of turns you have in Jaraxxus form to start generating 6-6s. Six oh, this is the Baltra's ceiling a lot of damage here. Yep. Because we know there's no silence, and the minions are just to go through that. Yep. And uh, the same goes for Death Lord. Basically, the same minion. Yep. Pretty much. And Gorehowl is just going to come down and absolutely crush this board because he can afford to tank the first two six sixes to come out with the Gorehowl with the seven damage charge and then the six damage charge. It's only after that that he starts to get in trouble with removing minions. And yeah, Oskaka agrees. It's better just to go into Jaraxxus form as early as possible. Just maximize mm -hmm, the amount mm -hmm. of 6-6s that you can get on the board. He's going to punch through this Belcher here and uh, reduce the, the power on board for Stan Sifka a little bit. But as I mentioned, Gore Howl is going to start to do so much work now here for, uh, for Stan Sifka. Uh, in fact, he just has Lethal. Yep. 14, Gore 14 damage no, no, 14. to face. Yep. 14. And then and one, the two damage from yep. fatigue that makes the game. Well, uh, I was actually funny with the turn three. We said, okay, this probably goes to fatigue. <laughs> yeah. And it went to fatigue, right? So, um, Stan Sitka is actually taking a lead 2 0. And he's left with his um, Warlock deck. Yep. I would assume that this might be Dragon, uh, Dragon Warlock if. It will go like with the unusual setups mm -hmm. from Stan Sivka here. I would really favor him to using a Dragon Warlock. Uh, but anyway, guys, remember this is the first tournament by organi organized by abiosgaming.com. 
be sure to hit that follow button because there will be more tournaments in the future and not only Hearthstone. Also, Counter Strike, Heroes of the Storm, maybe Overwatch, we'll see how it goes, but be sure to hit that follow button to get, notifi to get notified during the next tournaments. And also get notified for tomorrow because there will be day two of this tournament. Yep. So just going into now the what could possibly be the final game of the day, Oskaka fighting for his life, so no big surprise. Knowing that his opponent is playing a Warlock, he chooses to lead with his, his best matchup, which is the Druid. Uh, Druid heavily favored against most forms of Warlock, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, against... It's probably an exaggeration, right? It, it's it's very it, it's it's favored. It, it's favored against the particular style of warlock you expect most opponents to be playing, which is handlock. Um, if if there was a magical zoo just coming out of nowhere here from Sifka, he'd heavily regret this druid pick, but he'd have to win with it anyway at some point. So no great loss. And this looks like a um, standard handlock, I would say. Uh... There's no card that doesn't say, doesn't scream, I'm not a standard deck. Right. Yeah, I mean, he was playing a fairly standard druid as well, right? There was nothing particularly wacky about his druid deck, so mm -hmm. it might just be that warrior deck that's thrown, thrown a curveball, and yeah, kind of hard to evaluate where he was going exactly with that warrior deck. It definitely worked out for him incredibly well, and it looked like a really, really effective uh, handlock counter until we saw the death lords, which just don't seem like a particularly great minion. To play against Hanlock, but still worked out fine for him. But now we just see the the pressure building up on the board from Oskaka as the Druid player. He is going to whiff on his turn four, though. Yeah, and that's a big deal, actually. Yeah, it's a really big deal because if there's a Hellfire for next turn, it makes everything awkward. It does. Um, but honestly, what is there to do this turn? You're not you're not swiping face. I don't think you're going to wrath to cycle at all because you know you have not. Well, apparently you are. What do you know? What is he looking for here? Second down. So, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I just... I, I don't understand the card draw because you just... You have a perfectly fine 5, 6, 7. I guess what he's looking for is the answers, right? He doesn't have keepers or big game hunters or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so his response game is pretty weak right now in terms of dealing with the turn 4 that his opponent is going to play. But honestly, with the, with the curve of, uh, that he has right now... Um, I feel like you can just keep curving out with high quality minions each time. Oh wow. He goes for the second Dynasty Aspen. I wasn't rooting, uh, like, I didn't anticipate this. Oh. And it, even doesn't attack with the uh, I just wanted to say that if you, well. if you play Dynasty Aspirant, mm -hmm. you have to attack with the Shade. Because if your opponent has Hellfire, not only you lo you lose the two mana and three minions, you also lost three damage. Mm -hmm. But the, the play pays off. And, yeah, I mean, this is just another reason why I didn't really see too much reason to cycle. If the Mountain Giant came down here, he has a nice, a, a clean-ish play with the Swipe and the, the Shade of Naxxramas anyway. The fact that he's ramped up so heavily with the second Aspirant all the way up to six mana, he might be tempted to just dump Emperor on the board. Um, we would but see that... would be heavily punished by the Shadow Flame. It would, yeah. It would get punished pretty damn hard by the Shadow Flame. But still, you know, he'd get the Emperor effect. It would go off and the Giant would, would go off the board. The Giant, which in the alternative play, is taking the Shade with it anyway. Um, so is it really that much worse for him? Yeah, it probably is. But he's going to go for it anyway. Looks like Oskaka is playing this game uh, as risky as he possibly can. Just being the aggressor, pushing himself all in. Still chooses not to attack. Wow, that's just crazy. I have no idea what to say. This is uh, some ballsy play from Oskaka, to say the least. He just... This turn, he will lose two mana, mm -hmm. and the whole board, mm -hmm. and will get eight damage to the face. Yep. It seems like a good deal. It seems all right. I do not object wow. to that play. <sighs> I mean... Stan Sifka... Um, somewhat from the life coach school of thought, right? Likes to consider every option before doing the really obvious one, but I'm pretty sure we're going to end up with the Shadow Flame right now. Have you have you seen a better Shadow Flame than this? No, I do. <laughs> I, I I mean, even with the four minions, it's still fine. But the advantage of ga of regaining mana acceler—I mean, to just deny the mana acceleration—right. 
It's just huge. Yeah, I mean, you it, say the Emperor hit Dr. Boom, say the Emperor hit Ancient of Law, you deny both of those cards by removing the two mana and taking him down from seven to five, because either of those cards would cost six after being ticked once by Emperor. Um, so yeah, the double mana loss is hugely relevant because it denies the seven, the, 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 the seven mana play, which ends up as a six mana play, which is you know the most powerful things that Druids can do generally. Ancient of Law, Dr. Mm -hmm. Boom, those are the big power cards in the deck. Yep, definitely. Um, and yeah, just after that Shadow Flame, the, the board reset happened and we, we see a 4-4 four, four come down against a 5-5. Five, five. So Stan Sifka has actually got himself ahead on tempo, even by making a passive play that passed the uh, the initiative straight back to his opponent, just by Did having the yeah. superior minion to play straight away. Did you see the dragon in Stan Sifka's hand? I didn't see Alex oh. Straza for a long time in any hand like that. I had not noticed that, actually. That's really interesting. Um, I think generally, if you're playing Alex Straza, you also play some sort of kill condition. Um, even if it's just as tame as like one power overwhelming in your deck that can also maybe mm -hmm, synergize mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. something like a Sylvanas. Um, but yeah, generally the reason you choose to play that over Jaraxxus is that you have the option of being aggressive with it and lowering your opponent to 15. Yeah. Um, so Seven yeah. mana Alex Straza, wow. Really interesting choice, yeah. Zero mana Dark Bomb, zero mana Sylva uh, sorry, Owl, and two mana Big Game Hunter. Yeah, he just has lethal next turn as well, like... Yeah. Seven, I mean, mana, seven mana Alex, he can Owl his own Watcher for four damage, he can Dark Bomb for, for three more, and all of that fits into the mana because of the Emperor Thorasan. I but, mean, this will be traded. Yep. But, yeah. That was a plan. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it was. Wow. Very, okay. very interesting. Uh, so in this case, do you go for Twilight Drake Molten Giant? Seems pretty reasonable. You don't die to combo next turn because it's turn eight. Turn eight, yeah. So mm -hmm. And then you can, next turn, you can play Alexstrasza, deal seven damage, and have eight, 12, and Dark Bomb for lethal. Yep. I like it. As long as you get the AA on the board, then that is the only thing that has to stick. And you have Alex Straza, Owl on the Watcher if it lives, and Dark Bomb mm -hmm, in order mm -hmm, to burst. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that looks like a really nice setup now. I would definitely go for the lethal setup for the next turn. Yep. Looks solid to me. I mean, this is a matchup that doesn't favor the Warlock. Mm -hmm. So if you can set up this kind of lethal so soon. I would definitely do that, but, uh, but Stan is doing something completely different. Is it better? I mean, it puts more bodies on the on the field, so maybe it's better actually. It does, but he's losing the he's kind of losing the burst we talked about by owling the Watcher and attacking with it now, because now it's identified as a threat to his opponent. But he's mm -hmm. also loaded up mm -hmm. the board with a bunch of different threats. Um, so he now only has three damage of burst from his hand and the ability to set the opponent to 15. So he needs 12 damage to stick onto the board to have lethal next turn. Uh, I feel like playing the giant was better, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But he, he, wait, he didn't use the big game hunter yet, right? So maybe that's no. the reason. Yeah, I, I can understand that mentality for sure. That big game hunter represents a big swing on the board, whereas this is a much more kind of awkward, annoying board that druids don't like to deal with. You know, three, eight, two, three, those are the sort of mm -hmm, moments mm -hmm. that they just can't really deal with particularly well. So how much damage is it now? Uh, six. Four, six, eight, eleven. Uh, not lethal. One mana off lethal. <laughs> and you just use Big Game Hunter. Uh, yeah. Without any real reason. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, actually, no, with the one extra mana, he'd still be one damage off, right? I mean... Uh, I'm just talking about the, the big game hunter last turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so just correcting something that I said a little second ago. Oh, okay. Uh, it's eight hours of casting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can take a break, right? Yeah, tell me about it. Uh, but yeah, really, uh, just a really big swingy turn there. Picks up the um, the Molten Giant onto the board. Heal bots himself back up to 20. And now again, we have exactly 15 damage on this board, which is slightly less important than it was before because the Druid is just at 15. So the Alex Straza... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Alex Straza are not quite as relevant as it used to be. True. Yeah. True. And, uh, yeah. And still the Dark Moon for zero mana is like, uh, kind of weaker. Soulfire, pre-nerf. Mm -hmm. 
but no drawback. So one less damage, no drawback. So does Oskaka have to use a defensive force of nature here in order to live, from his perspective, of course? Like, we know the dart bomb's in hand, but does he feel like he has to use the force of nature? I guess the answer is no. Uh, so he's literally just going to hero power and gain the one and ask his opponent to have one damage. And we do, in fact, see that Stan Sifka has one damage. Has three damage. Wow. We go. Well, that was a really quick match. 3-0 by Stan Sivka against Ostkaka. That's actually really impressive. That is really impressive. Yeah. So, congratulations to Stan Sivka. He's advancing to round of eight for tomorrow because this is a single elimination bracket. Ostkaka is kicked out brutally <laughs> by Stan Sivka. And that wraps up the day. We had eight matches today. And the... The players that did advance, you can check those by typing exclamation mark bracket on abusgaming.com. Today we have so, uh, we seen Orange winning the game, Ecop, Firebat, Cypher, RDU, Tom, Kaldi, and Stan Sivka. So this will be what, what will be tomorrow, because tomorrow it's quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals of the Abius Grand Tournament. So we're wrapping up. Today, uh, we're starting the same time tomorrow, so 6 p.m. CST, so eight hours ago. And um, yeah, basically that's it. Anything to add, Sotl? Uh, just fantastic day of Hearthstone, a uh, couple of really exhausting series and uh, a long day overall, but just a pleasure to be here and just to commentate on some, some high-level Hearthstone and looking forward to a fantastic-looking top eight tomorrow. So Yeah, we're kind of... Kinda really happy for, about it. So, be sure to pay a visit to abius.com. I'm uh, sorry, abiusgaming.com to check the calendar for other esports games and Hearthstone, and show up tomorrow here in the same channel. So click that follow button. For now, thank you for watching, and see you guys in a bit at uh, during the day too. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye, guys. <laughs>